Welcome to another groundbreaking episode of Let's Talk AI, Trust, Innovation, People. And it's powered by EY.AI right here on businesstech.coza. As usual, I'm your host, Michael Avery, and today we're prompting deeper into the issues of cybercrime and artificial intelligence. And I just learned about Worm GPT the other day, just as I'm figuring out how Chat GPT works. So joining us is an expert in the field, Candace Wilson, EY Western Cape Consulting and Cybersecurity Leader. Candace, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be here. To kick things off, just tell us a little bit more about your role as the EY Western Cape uh, Consulting and Cyber Security Leader. What does a typical day in your position look like? <laughs> I'm not sure there is, is a typical day. Um, yeah, and since returning to, to EY 18 months ago, sure, um, and it has been a bit of a, a wild ride. Our consulting practice in the Western Cape has grown at a rate I don't think any of us could have imagined. We know the Western Cape is a vibrant economic hub. It's a growth node for, for South Africa. Um, but I think it's uh, blown all of our expectations. The growth has well, really that is been, remarkable. Yeah, it's been phenomenal. It's been amazing. Um, and my role as Western Cape Consulting Leader, leader is really to create an environment um, in which our diverse teams um, can thrive. And it's also about bringing the best of, of EY from across the world to our clients in the Western Cape. So at the moment, we have teams from across the world serving our clients in the Western Cape. And we also have our teams from the Western Cape um, serving our, our teams and practices all over the world. So it's really an exciting time to be part of EY. Wow. And uh, as someone who travels between Joburg and Cape Town regularly, one can understand why. Uh, I hate to stress the point too much, but it just feels like a different country in terms of the the energy, the businesses that are opening the vibrancy, and it does, uh, I think, largely stem from the good governance and the security that businesses um, are afforded down there. And it's because of that that you see the Western Cape being recognized as well as a bit of an innovation hub in South Africa. We talk about the Silicon Savannah of East Africa. But you go down to the Western Cape and you can't um, avoid bumping into a tech startup in a coffee shop. Can you just share why this is? What, you know, what is it that gives the Western Cape this, this um, tech innovation, vibrancy that, it, that it's developed over the years. Mm. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and the Western Cape, it certainly has been and, and is a, a hub of innovation. And I think it's quite understated. We just seem to do things quietly, get on with these things that have sort of global impact. Just think about, I mean, it pops digital certificates, AWS's EC2, 3D underwater imaging, and, and more recently, Yoko Payments. Um, they've all had their, their genesis in the Western Cape. Um, we've just always punched well above our weight um, and using innovation and technology to, to reimagine the future. Um, we're seeing the same now with, with AI. Uh, organizations in the Western Cape are exploring it. Um, it's a new way of innovation and, and also just as an exciting future. Um, and EY, we've had the privilege of helping our clients across a variety of sectors to, to help solve these problems um, using AI. Yeah, can share a few examples of what we've been with these clients. Well, I'd love to hear a few examples of, of how you're helping your clients in the region use AI innovatively. And I was also just thinking, you know, I know a lot of venture capitalists, seed and angel investors who are based down in the Western Cape. And uh, I think many of them also love you know, the cycling and the outdoor weather and on the Breda Valley, you've got, uh, you've got some fantastic, almost, you know, um, uh, from an IP perspective, uh, you know, geography that you can't repeat anywhere else in the world. So you've got that as well uh, to go along with this great vibrancy and energy. But back to, you know, how you're using your clients um, or using your IP to help clients in the re in the region with AI, it's still a, it feels like a very nascent technology, and we're just getting to grips with things like ChatGPT. But artificial intelligence has actually been around for for quite some time. You know, so how do you bring that to bear in your consulting business, helping your clients? Absolutely, and I think clients in the Western Cape, much like the history of you know being innovators. They like to try out new things. They like to explore. And I think that's the excitement of, of being in the Western Cape and really um, supporting our clients. You know, for example, our, our retailers, um, some are using machine learning and AI to really predict the best locations to open their stores using a variety of factors and, and data sources. They're also using um, Gen I for sort of virtual trials. 
so you can see how an outfit's going to look at look on you before before you buy it. So really nice innovation. Um, financial services using AI to create hyper personalized insurance products um, and Gen AI chatbots um, really for customer support. Even our government um, doing some really innovative things um, using AI, looking at smart metering and digital policing. So some really exciting innovations which you know, customers and, and clients in the Western Cape are embracing. With that, obviously comes this focus, uh, uh, you know, has to be on security. And given your expertise in cybersecurity, how do you see AI firstly being used to enhance the security of key systems? Because make no mistake, I'm sure bad actors are now going to start utilizing this technology to try and hack into your system. So how do you see it firstly on the positive side being used to enhance the security of systems? I suppose to start the point, um, AI is, or cybersecurity is one of the areas where AI has been used for, for quite some time. Um, it's not a new technology for cybersecurity, um, but they're really new innovations and new ways which is it's having an impact. I think the, the three, and the, and the first one I'd like to touch on is really reducing the workload. You know, cybersecurity is glamorous, but a lot of it is real drudgery work, you know, going through reams and reams of blogs, and it's really helping uh, with that accelerate um, that, that process. Also updating documentation. Nobody likes updating documentation. So it's really getting getting the AIs and, and the LLNs to, to do that updating for you. Um, the second area where we're seeing it is to identify these sophisticated attacks. You know, these sort of very subtle patterns which you can pick up if you use a variety of data sources and really a huge amount of data that you can analyze very quickly to pick up these subtle patterns We've seen organizations on average um, respond to attacks 60% quicker when they use AI than, than just the normal traditional methods. And then the third area is really using AI technology for protection, sort of more sophisticated um, ways in which you can protect your environment. So, for example, instead of using static rules by saying, you know, so and so can have access to the system, you use dynamic rules, which are based on a variety of factors and risks. One company, we saw a 90% reduction in fraud um, by using dynamic AI um, for their rules engine. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it was one of the one of the big banks. Uh, I was transacting offshore, getting a present uh, for, for my significant other at a, an odd time of the day. It was first thing in the morning, offshore, and I, it must have pegged, triggered a few red flags in the bank because I promptly got an automatic call. So, Mr. Avery, is this you? And... Uh, I, Fortunately, it was, but it just shows you that systems are working around the clock behind the scene to try and um, prevent things like credit card fraud, for example. On the flip side, are there areas where the implementation of AI could potentially have a negative impact on cybersecurity if you don't do it properly? Absolutely. Um, like the adoption of any new technology, it, it comes with new risks and new ways for attackers to try to break into your system. Um, for example, there's a new kind of cyber attack called AI poisoning, which basically involves flooding the AI models um, with fake data or interfering with the algorithms to get the models to act in a particular way or in a malicious way. There are also cyber attacks where malicious code is inserted into the models, basically a, a virus on, on steroids. But they're still basic things which you can do to protect yourself. You know, the same cyber rules, the same principles apply. You secure the data, secure the access, secure the code. It's the same protection which you need to apply. AI poisoning is now just uh, another uh, factor we've got to add to a very long list of potential threats. And I often worry about social engineering and how artificial intelligence could now increase the ability for, for an attacker to mimic your voice to mimic your mannerism, send you a voice note to, to to get you to transfer money into an account or something like that. But in your experience, what are some of the most significant mistakes that companies make when it comes to this intersection of AI and cybersecurity? And how can these pitfalls be avoided? I think the biggest mistake is being afraid um, and really trying to avoid AI because you're afraid of, of the cyber risks. Um, you're seeing organizations say sort of try and, and steer away from using AI because they're afraid of, of the cyber risks. But the truth is by not investing in AI, it doesn't make you immune 
to the AI cyber attacks. In fact, I would say it increases your risk of falling prey because the adversaries, they already use AI, as you say, you know, deep fakes and, and all these sophisticated methods, they're being used against you. And by not using AI and not becoming familiar with the technologies, it's making you more vulnerable. You have to keep abreast of the latest technologies. You have to protect yourself by using these technologies yourself and learning how attackers are going to use them against you. So I think that's the single biggest mistake. It's, it's really being afraid of, of these technologies. Um, and then not applying the basics. I say the basics are, are universal. Um, you know, keep your access right. Secure your data, secure your code. These are the basics that you need to get right. Yeah, and I think uh, you know it's it's so true for artificial intelligence across the organisation, not just in cybersecurity. But I see so many businesses that are not using it. They may be a little bit scared of it. Maybe it's because of this idea that uh, it could potentially replace certain jobs and functions. And in a country like South Africa, they rather just stick their their necks and their heads in the sand and forget about it. But your your competitors are using this technology and they're using these tools. And if you're not, they're surely steaming a competitive march on you. Now, uh, give, with that kind of hat on, I understand you're quite passionate about social justice. And it's certainly one of the big issues that I get asked a lot on my various platforms is, you know, artificial intelligence sounds like a great technology isn't the big concern for us here in South Africa the fact that it could potentially take away jobs? And you read um, social scientists like um, Harari, who reckons the network effects of AI are just greater than anything we've seen in the past. How do you envision AI um, from that perspective of potentially taking away jobs? Or do you see it as something that on a net basis is more creator of new opportunities? Yeah, I'm certainly on, on the side of believing that AI will be a net creator um, of jobs. Um, I mean, the truth is we have a huge skill shortage, you know, in cyber and in many other areas where AI is helping. You know, AI sees a way to retain skills because it takes away a lot of the drudgery in our work. Um, you know, for example, in our cyber teams, it takes away the stuff that our cyber teams don't enjoy doing. I mean, you know, looking at endless reams of love, searching through different data sources. Um, so AI can play a really important role in, in help close that skills gap, making cyber and, and other jobs far more attractive. Um, and they're completely new careers that have been spawned with AI. I just think in the cyber area, you know, trusted AI, AI governance, um, configuring AI bots, these are all new careers because of AI. And if I bring it back to the Western Cape, I mean, I firmly believe that the Western Cape is an alternative to immigration um, by creating more exciting jobs um, and creating jobs using AI. I think we can attract and retain skills in the Western Cape, which in turn will create more and more employment rather than less. Yeah, I think that's just such a fantastic point. At a, a social event over the weekend, I was chatting to someone who was um, in his mid-50s, and he says, Michael, I'm not going anywhere, and I'm actually quite optimistic about the future of the country. My concern, though, is um, those between 30 and 40 and how many people we are losing. We can't afford to lose those skills. So this is a great way to ensure that we create an environment where we do attract and retain the best and the brightest uh, to help be part of that future South Africa that we'd all like to see. Candice, thanks so much for sharing your expertise with us today here on Let's Talk AI on Business Talk. Take care.